Welcome if you're new. We're back. Hi guys. We are now in the midnight era. Mm. So this is gonna be a little different than the way that we normally do it. So just to kind of give you a little breakdown, it's all divided. So for the rankings, it's divided into three separate parts. The regular 13 tracks, the 3 a.m. edition, which is the seven bonus tracks, mm. and then the what I like I like to call it the lavender edition bonus tracks even though I'm pretty sure it's just like a deluxe edition but I'm gonna call it that for that purpose mm -hmm. so those are the three different sections we have for the rankings and then after that we're gonna go into what our five top favorite songs are and what our top least three favorite songs are and then we're gonna talk about this little thing that I like to call callback parallels i could not come up with a better name for it so that's what i'm calling it and uh yeah let's begin so, so fun. starting with track one lavender haze what do you rate it seven i give it an 8.5 to a nine i did not expect it to sound like that so i was really caught off guard but then it like reminded me of like like three different songs off of like lover mm -hmm. but it definitely fits like I think he knows yes. perfectly. All right, next track is Maroon. I gave it a seven. What did you give it? Five. I'm not really a fan of it. I literally called Avery and I told him not to listen to anything Which Taylor didn't. Swift, Midnight's Era related, and that I told him he was going to hate it. The only thing I listened to by Taylor Swift recently was You Belong Man. It's the only one I listened to. The regular version or Taylor's version? Old Taylor. Mm -hmm. Typical, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry that I'm Anyways. lame. Anyways, um, track three, Anti Hero. I gave it a 10. I got an eight. Wait until you see the music video, dude. I'm gonna point out every little thing. Please don't. <laughs> All right, next up is track four, Snow on the Beach, featuring Lana Del Rey. I gave it a three. I don't really like it. It kind of like, it's like something that I feel like you would sing to your kid to like get them to fall asleep. Get them to go to fuck the bed. <laughs> um, plus, I'll be honest, I've ne I had no idea. Like I've heard the name Lana, De Lana Del Rey before. It's never. Just, I've never. I've never listened to her music, but. To me, she sounds like she sings some strictly Spanish music. Like I it's just. I don't know, like, I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna, like, listen to, like, some of her music, just because on this specific track, like, I don't really hear her vocals. I don't hear her either. I only really hear Taylor's, and, you know. Alright, track five, You're On Your Own, Kid. I got a nine. I give it a 9.5. That's wrong. I definitely like the fact that, like, it kind of, like, goes, it kind of, like, talks about, like, from, like, start of her career to, like, where she is now, like, that type of thing. Uh, next up is track six, Midnight Rain. I gave this one a six point. I gave this one a five. I, know, I looked at the wrong one. one. Per now, for me, I just I don't know. I never, and I mean never, ever pause. What? Do I have dirt on my face? Do I have dirt on my face? No. I thought I had dirt on my face no, for a it's minute just, there. No, it's just your freckles that you get earlier. Jesus. <laughs> I literally thought I had dirt smudged on my face for a second. Like, I noticed it throughout the whole time. Alright, so Midnight Rain, I give it a 5 because it's not my favorite. I don't hate it. It's, it's, it's still a good song. It's just, I think what really throws me off balance is the warped voice. Mm, I like it. Next up is track 7, Question. That I gave a 6.5. I gave it a straight up 6. I think it's it is. It, I think it is... I mean, it's kind of nice. Then again, like I'm not really used to like this style of music, mm. and I feel like the I feel like the more that I listen to the entire album, I might end up liking it more. But I am very picky with certain music types. Yes, and you are. This, like this gives me like '80s disco vibes. <laughs> now I'm not really a big disco fan. Neither am I. And I prefer like '80s country music. I mean, come on, like, think about it, like, Dolly Parton, Kenny Rogers, like, 
Johnny Cash, like that type of, like that type <laughs> right there. Just saying, all right? Johnny Cash. All right, next up is track eight, Vigilante Shit. I gave that a nine. That's a seven. I like how she pretty much came for, like, either Scooter Braun or Kanye West. Mm. I mean, in the way, like, the lyric kind of does fit both of them, considering every, all, like, all the drama that happened. But you should have seen my face when I heard the, that line. I was like, shit, she really came for them. Just a disclaimer. Not trying to brew any more drama. Mm. <laughs> Just saying. All right. Uh, track nine, Bejeweled. I gave that a 9.5. I absolutely love the music five. video. The music video is just really great. You really, I'm going to send it to you later, dude. Of course you are. All right. Sorry about that, guys. All right. Track number 10, Labyrinth. I gave that a three. That song sucks. <laughs> no offense to Taylor's, the Swifty fans out there. It sucks. Taylor is incredible with her songwriting. Yeah, don't get me wrong. She can and sing. And she's really good at it. Um, This song just doesn't it's fit. Just, it doesn't fit. I'm, I just never, like, I never thought this is where she would end up. Me too. Like, it's really, it's a really good place. Yeah. Okay, don't get us wrong. It's a really good place. Um, she's doing good for I just did not. I, no, I absolutely love every single album. Like, I do too. Her creativeness is what I love about her. Yeah. Her creativeness is incredible. However, I'm a little nitpicky about this. What are you not nitpicky, nitpicky about this question? That is a good question, <laughs> honestly. I, I don't really know, man. All right. Next up, track 11, Karma. The one everybody literally, like, she pretty much taunted us when she gave us I that track seven. title. Sorry, I gave that a seven. 10 because I absolutely love it. Like, she, call, she like, calls out, like, Scooter Braun and Scott Braschetta. You can really just tell that that's what it's directed at with that one lyric. Mm -hmm. All right, track 12, Sweet Nothing. I gave that a five. Eight. I mean, it's really cutesy and, like, lovey-dovey. It's just, I feel like that's something that, like, if I listened to it, it would just put me to sleep. Because, like, I do watch and listen to, like, horror stories on YouTube. And You're fucking weird. I literally can just fall asleep to that stuff, which is a little concerning. That is not a little. That is a lot concerning. The fuck is wrong with you? I don't know what it is. It's probably like about like the person, like the storyteller's like voice. Like it's just so uh, soothing. So the voice is soothing enough to put your ass yes. fucking night night down. Okay. And not have nightmares about what it is <laughs> that I'm listening to. But with sweet nothing, I just feel like it's a lullaby. Kind All of. right, track thirteen. Mastermind. I gave that a ten. I gave it a four. Um, the part where she's like, I laid down the groundwork, and then like the dominoes cascaded the into place. Like, I love that line because it definitely shows that like she's had everything planned out since the very first, since the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And she is really, she's really going places, man. Okay. All right. Now we're gonna move on to the 3 a.m. edition. Fun times. All right. So this this is seven bonus tracks, which would be that which is actually numbered 14 to 20. All right. So track 14, The Great War. What did you rate it? Six. I give it a 9.5. It has potential. I I like it. Yeah. The the, it, the reason I gave it a six is because it reminds me like of a song that from my band that I listen to called The Great War. Let's do totally different genres of music. Yeah. You're going to have to send me that song because I kind of want to do like a comparison. You want to listen to Great War by Sabaton? Be my just, guest. Just for fun. Just send me the video later. All mm -hmm. right. Next is 15, which is Bigger Than the Whole Sky. I give that a three. I I'm going to say right now that is my lowest ranking for this album. I never went any far, any lower than a three on this entire album. The lowest I, I just, went was one. To me, it, it just... It just sounds like a lullaby for me. Yeah, hey, it puts me to sleep. Like, I'm tired and already. nowadays, I'm kind of into, like, that more, like, upbeat yeah, kind of sound now. You and I are both into upbeat and shit. Um, next is track 16, Paris. I gave it a 5. Better an 8. I mean, I like it. It's, it. it's a little upbeat, but it's not too upbeat. Mm -hmm. All right, track 17, High Infidelity. I gave that a 10 because I really like it. Like, it's so Seven. upbeat. Like, I just love it. 
Um, next is track 18. This is called Glitch. I give that a 5.5. Like, it has potential to be upbeat. That's it's just, nice. it's just not at my level of upbeatness, mm, if no. you know what I mean. Mm. All right, next is track 19, Would've, Could've, Should've. I gave it a 10. Absolutely love it. And we will be talking about, um, this song specifically when we get to the callback parallels. Sorry, I gave it a 5 because I don't really like it. You're, you're kind of in between. I'm in the between of a lot of those because yeah. you know me. Yeah. Alright, track 20. Last track on the, for like the 7 bonus tracks of the 3AM edition, Dear Reader. I gave that a 6. I gave it a 7. In I a way, that. like, in a way, like, what I like about this song specifically is she's like giving us like a letter like, like, hey, like, this is like kind of like what to do like what not to do like what would happen like just be basically just, just tell us like if we decide to like go for like a record deal like be smart about it yeah, be prepared be here's what i learned from it take my advice yeah. kind of thing take your take advice all right now we're gonna move on to the three bonus tracks that are on the deluxe version of the album which this is what i call the lavender edition because it is only available on the lavender vinyl and cd edition mm -hmm. of the album so the first song we have is hits different absolutely love it 10 out of 10 like how could you like make a song that good i like it for me and too. only have it as a bonus track like that's what i'm saying like what the fuck Why like you can't even get it on itunes Gay. I know, right? Like, I really wish that this song was on the album. Me too. Honestly, because that is such a great song. Like, even though I barely listen. How to do you not put that on the album? It is so upbeat, and I really like it. It's probably my favorite. It's pro It's definitely like within my top phase, which we will get to in a minute. Next is the two remixes. So we have "You're on Your Own, Kid" strings remix, which That's I a gave a seven point five. I gave it ten. I like it. And then the last one is the piano remix of Sweet Nothing. That's I gave a it a seven. Nine Personally, um, track wise, I prefer Sweet Nothing, the piano version, over the regular version. All right, now moving on to our top faves. Avery, would you like to go first? Sure, why not? All right. Okay. My What's your top five faves from my, the album? My top faves, obviously, number one. It's different. Number two, you're on your own, kid. The strings remix. Three, you're on your own, kid. The regular. regular. Okay. Four, sweet nothing piano remix, and five, anti hero. All right. What about you? So I actually wrote my little list before I even like heard hits different. So for me, it's anti hero. You're on your own, kid. The regular version. Karma, vigilante shit, and hits different. Which at this point, I think. I think Hits Different definitely takes number one spot. All right, now we're going to start with our least faves. And what we did is we just decided on three, mm -hmm. which are the lowest ones that we have. Mm -hmm. Now, for me, I'm kind of just like kind of, I was very nitpicky about it. But for me, my top three least favorites on the album is Midnight Rain, Sweet Nothing, and Labyrinth. What about you? Well, my first one, obviously, Midnight Rain is hers. Second, my second one is Glitch, and three is Labyrinth. I just don't like them. They're like not. They don't. It just doesn't really stand no, out doesn't. to me. Like especially Labyrinth. Like yeah. it just doesn't stand out to me. Labyrinth. All I think is mazes. <laughs> <laughs> all I think of is fucking. I kind of thought of like Maze Runner to be honest with you. I hate. I've never movie. even seen Maze Runner or read the books. I have. It's retarded. Personally, it's, it's not something that I would like suck. be into. Honestly, the, the fucking movie is awful. All right, now we're gonna talk about this thing that I. Didn't know what else to call it, except for Callback Parallels, which I really like the sound of that. Callback Parallels. Me too. I like the sound of that. Mm. Alright, so the first parallel is Lavender Haze, and I Think He Knows. Mm. They are just similar in yeah. beat and vocals. Yeah, so that's where the parallel is, yeah. and it's kind of calling back to, yeah. like... Because if you listen very carefully, you can hear it in both, in both songs. Mm -hmm. You can hear it. Mm -hmm. And this is something that a lot of people are talking about. Yeah. Because it sounds like she's doing like sampling samples of previous songs but like she's not lazy about it you know yeah. because a lot of songs do require like a similar like upbeat type of sound or whatever and then next we have 
the track 19 would have could have should have and dear john from the yeah. speak now album they just have lyric parallels yeah. like you can just tell lyrics are kind of fucking um so for would have could have should have it's if i was some paint did it splatter it's parallel to in dear john when she mentions you paint me a blue sky yeah for me that for me the paint reference yeah is what made me think of that and then we also have do you need something can you can you can you, can you go away please i'm trying to film yeah I can go away. it's the second time all right and again like when she says at 19 in would have could have should have it's kind of a reference to the lyric, don't you think 19's too young? Yes, it is. And for me, it was the mentioning of the paint and the mentioning of the age of being 19 that kind of really, like, made me think that. I don't know what the fuck y'all fucking thinking, 32 um, and fucking 19. <laughs> true. That's kind of a lot worse than the whole Jake Gyllenhaal thing. Mm. Like, yeah, that's still a 10-year age difference, but that was, like, what, an 11-year age difference? Yeah. <laughs> um, the very last one, this is something that I've actually seen on the internet lately. It's the line, give me back my girlhood, it was mine first. Mm -hmm. I can see why that is a lyric parallel to, like, when um, her and John Mayer had, like, dated at some point. Because, like... Because, you know, like, she was still somewhat of a child, you know, just at yeah. the start of her career, 19, basically. dating a 32-year-old. I mean, she, she was over the age of 18, like, 18 and up, like... Still. <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, I get chills just, like, picturing that. Like, I, I, Why I the can't. fuck would you picture it? I'm a visual learner, remember? <laughs> Don't take that the wrong way. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Sorry, I, I do. How are, did we become friends again? <laughs> I would really like to know that. Shut up, you love me. Alright, and then another parallel, which I actually completely missed this until literally I was just playing him the track. But in question, she says, I remember at like the very beginning. And this song has a very similar, that has like a similar beat but it's also parallel to the track Out of the Woods with the I Remember. Yes. Because of how it's sang. Very much. Very much sung. so. Anyways, guys. Oh, one more thing. Do we love it? Do we hate it? Or is it 50-50? Personally, I overall love it. It's not my favorite album, but I do love it. I'm a 50-50 on it. I don't hate it. I don't love it. I'm in the middle. Yeah, you're kind of in the middle. Like, you just... you. I feel like if you were to listen to it a little bit more then you might lean more towards love it or more towards hate it. Uh, At this point, me, it just depends. Like, it's you. It's knowing a, it's me, a you I'm going to go towards the fucking hate it. It's a you problem, man. It's a me problem. It's a you problem. Uh, Anyways, guys. Ass. Oh, look, there's Twix in the background. Hi, buddy. Hi, buddy. Look at you. I can squish your little head. Look at that. <laughs> All right, guys. That is it for the video. Make sure to subscribe, like, comment down below, and make sure you have notifications on. And yeah, see you guys in the next video. Bye!